a return to the bad old days when simple infections could kill. That's the scenario we may face as bacteria become increasingly resistant to antibiotics. Already 5,000 people die every year in Australian hospitals from diseases caught there. Scientists worldwide are searching for an alternative to antibiotics, but one may already exist. John Collis explores the world of good and bad bacteria and a battle we must win. Constant fascination. I just like the exquisite uh, design and function of a lot of the bacteria and microbes and the way they interact with the larger forms of life. It's one of the ironies of scientific endeavour that the more we know, the more there is to learn. If you think about it, it's an incredible orchestra going on all the time in the background of these, of these really, really uh, exquisite control mechanisms. And I think we we're only just beginning to understand that. The rest of us should sincerely hope so. Word from the front line of antibiotic research is that our lives will depend upon it. The bacteria have mutated and are fighting back. If we don't do something now, then in a few years' time it's going to get very serious. Somewhere in the vast swirl of unseen life, medicine's magic bullet is losing its punch. Sabotaged by ignorance, overuse and abuse on a scale that beggars belief. I think we've squandered one of the most magical gifts that human, humans have ever, ever had. The revenge of the killer microbes, the world at the mercy of long forgotten scourges like the plague, typhoid, rheumatic fever. It sounds like something straight out of a Hollywood backlot. But no special effects required because we're already living the nightmare. In developing countries around the world, people are already dying in their millions from once easily treatable diseases. And even here in Australia, with access to the latest drugs, 5,000 people will die this year from diseases caught in hospitals while being treated for something else. Almost every bacteria you can think of causing disease in humans, resistance has gone up uh, from levels of 10, 15 years ago. So that after five or 10 years, you've got quite large percentages of these bacteria that are difficult and in some cases impossible to treat. The fatal flaw now understood by science is in the fundamental resilience of life. The more antibiotics are used, the less effective they become. And, says leading Australian microbiologist, Canberra Hospital's Dr Peter Cognon, they're used an awful lot. There's huge volumes of antibiotics, in fact more than are used in people, used as growth promoters and in feed preventative agents. Now, all the recent studies from Denmark and elsewhere show there's probably not even any benefit from the animals in doing that, or if it is, it's very marginal. And in any case, even if we got a 1% benefit, which is doubtful, is that worth having superbugs in our food? Human medicine, meanwhile, is running out of options as drug manufacturers desert antibiotic research for more lucrative fields. Our best chance, it seems, stop the waste, conserve those drugs still working and stall for time. Unless there's something else, something overlooked in the teeming swirl of microscopic life. In suburban Sydney, a private research laboratory is revisiting a medical backwater lost to mainstream science for more than 70 years. Have a look here. Just come in this morning. Yeah. Oh, this is beautiful. Okay. Bacteriophage therapy involves using special microbe-eating viruses, abundant in nature, to treat disease. An idea swept aside in the 30s by antibiotics, now the focus of new international interest and the passion of Dr Tony Smithyman's Special Farge Services, a company specifically set up to commercialise the technology. As a student, when I should have been studying, I used to draw pictures of farges because they were such amazing looking 
uh, creatures. I couldn't believe anything that, that looked like a spaceship could actually be a biological entity. Here, nature's Pac-Man goes to work, hijacking a microbe's internal chemistry to replicate its own genetic code. 30 minutes later, up to 200 new identical phages come out, and they, they come out by bursting the bacteria open. Remarkably, the idea of a microbial predator goes back 115 years. British scientists in India first to speculate on the mysterious healing powers of the polluted river Ganges. 20 years later in Paris, bacteriologist Felix Durrell identified the virus as nature's gift to a world at the mercy of lethal pathogens. During the whole history of mankind, you know, they sort of battled away with bacteria and infections and, you know, you could scratch yourself and be dead a couple of days later. But the instant acclaim accompanying his discovery ended abruptly in the wartime clamour for that other scientific marvel, penicillin. And Durrell's discovery was forgotten. Everywhere else but here. Hidden away behind the Iron Curtain in the old Georgian capital of Tbilisi, the dream lived on, at first for military use, on direct orders from Stalin. By the time rumours reached the West at the end of the Cold War, phage therapy was routine medicine in all Soviet bloc states. It all made such perfect sense because it was all based on such pure, exquisite science. We knew all about phages, we just hadn't thought or well, we hadn't been taught or brought up with this idea that they could be used to treat. Remedies still produced on vintage machines within these crumbling walls have saved hundreds of thousands from diseases like dysentery, typhus and cholera. I use phage preparation for my children, for my grandchildren. I never use antibiotics and any time I recommend it and other patients use phages. Now here I am in beautiful Tbilisi, Georgia and I'm getting bacteriophage therapy. Westerners failed by antibiotics are suddenly an important revenue source for the impoverished republic. This man, crippled for years by a chronic bone infection, cured completely after 10 days of treatment. And I want to tell my friends back home who are waiting for this medicine to hang on, it's on its way, and uh, soon we'll all be enjoying the benefits of phage therapy. But how soon? In the rigorous regulatory environment of Western medicine, that is the billion dollar question. We've all grown up with the idea of a virus is bad, but these aren't, these are the good guys. These are, could be the greatest friend that we've ever found. Although tried and trusted by three generations of Russians, securing the imprimatur of accepted science could take years. The Sydney strategy to get a foot in the door by first targeting the less regulated agricultural and veterinary markets. This is going to be a very big industry over the next uh, 20, 30 years. But Dr. Peter Cognon has reservations. Well, it won't be a magic bullet. It may be a new type of bullet that you know, shoots bacteria in a different way, but it's likely to have the same um, problems with uh, making sure it, it stays in the long run as do antibiotics. Time will tell. By any test, says Tony Spithyman, it's another weapon in a shrinking arsenal. In combination with conventional medicine, phage therapy would help antibiotics bridge the gap to drugs of the future promised by the molecular biology revolution. But what I do know about it is that, that we're lucky to have a second chance. That's my feeling. A second chance that seems strangely predestined to one day spring from here. I'm the great-grandson of Felix Dial. <laughs> In this century-long saga of twists and turns, the arrival of biologist and marketing specialist Dr. Hubert Mazur is another uncanny coincidence. When he joined the parent biotech company, phages were no more than a glimmer in Tony Smithyman's eye. Both oblivious to their shared passion, 
until Monsieur found a book by his famous ancestor on Smithyman's desk. You see this photograph on your desk, this book, that's my great-grandfather. And he was absolutely flabbergasted. Fargers, he says, are in the blood. Both his parents worked with the old professor in his Paris lab. I'm a living proof that uh, bacteriophage therapies works because as a kid, that was standard uh, therapy given to us when we had uh, upset tummy or a sore throat. Uh, drink this and that was it. <laughs> and it worked. <laughs> Family stories recall a brilliant, impatient man who wanted to make a difference, cheated of his destiny by a quirk of fate. But that's life. Indeed it is. And the more we learn of it, the more there is to understand. John Collis reporting. To health news now. And a Sydney company is working on a groundbreaking solution to one of the world's most serious medical problems, our growing resistance to antibiotics. An almost forgotten therapy pioneered in Russia during the days of Stalin is now being considered as a potential weapon against the crisis. Australia imports 700,000 kilos of antibiotics a year. But as superbugs render many ineffective, this is what doctors here may be using in the near future. Bacteriophages, naturally occurring bacteria eaters. Seen here demolishing a common bug in just minutes. Sometimes it's a sort of overnight recovery but you have to have the right phage for the right bacteria. Scientists say the phages look just like a moon lander. And they float down out of space onto the bacterial surface, punches through the wall, uh, takes over the internal mechanisms, reproduces itself several dozen times and then bursts out, killing the bacteria. Interestingly, while the Western world was busy developing antibiotics, the Soviet state of Georgia had become a leader in these bacteria-eating virus, successfully treating thousands of Russian patients. Now the Georgian scientists are joining forces with Sydney's Royal North Shore Hospital and Australia's first company to commercially develop the treatment. We have a lot of troubles in Australia and worldwide with antibiotic-resistant bacteria, some of which are completely untreatable and it's very important that we've got another string to our bow. With a kickstart grant from New South Wales Department of State and Regional Development, the phages will also be developed for agriculture use. And when they've killed the bacteria, they then, the body then naturally expels them. While sold over the counter in Russia, even for a simple sore throat, here human trials will be at least two years away. Cheryl Taylor, National 9 News.